Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. It's the Christmas Eve edition. Week 16 of the NFL season is here. Ike, if you want to place a bet on the NFL action, betonline.ag is the place to do it. I guarantee you if people didn't bet, Ike Taylor would be wearing the ugly shirt. So it says, ask your mom. <laughs> if I'm real. <laughs> right? So <laughs> you got you got dang right on real. This is the one and only Ike Taylor speaking with Mark Bergen. And you know what? Every time you need to bet, 365, 24-7, make sure y'all go to betonline.ag. We're both donning our ugly Christmas sweaters, Ike, and I've got to reveal mine now, too. I've got Santa okay. Claus in Chilling the hunting and fishing yeah. gear, you know? Like, that's, that's just how you have Santa, to do it. Hey, Santa hungry. When I saw the hunting and fishing gear, he hungry. Absolutely. So, if you want to place a bet on the action, make a little bit of extra money. Given that it's the holiday season, betonline.ag mm-hmm. is the place to do it. Head to the new and updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B L E A V 50, to receive your bonus. Bet online where the game starts. All right, cue the music. Cue it's time to it's start the show. Time to start the show. <laughs> I like when my dog marks it in. Cue the music. Time to start the show. Welcome to hey, the look. Christmas Eve edition hey, of look. the Believe in hey, Steelers look, podcast. Hold on, hold on, Mark. Ike, what's hold happening? On, Mark. Whenever we go big, I need you to say this. Every time, cue the music, it's time to start the show. <laughs> that be, that be getting me fired up, bro. <laughs> that be getting me fired up. I'm sorry, love him, bro, but that be getting no, me fired up. Ike, this is fantastic. And it's, it, I'm feeling jovial. I don't know about you. We've got the ugly Christmas sweaters. I've got the leg lamp from Christmas Story. I see it, Boots I on see the it, ground in it. Kansas City, Ike. I'm going to be there at Arrowhead if the game well, in fact, happens on Sunday. Before we get into today's show, though, this is your first ugly Christmas sweater ever. First, I found that first. hard to believe. I can't believe it, Ike. Bro, my first, this is my first ugly. And you know what? I'm proud of it. I don't know what show it is, but make sure we get the data on what show this is. My first ugly ever Christmas sweater. And I'm going to rock it like I've been rocking it for 41 years. <laughs> I like I, I love this. And we've got to give a shout out to our producer, Courtney Vargas, for the idea, mm-hmm. the Christmas Eve edition of the yeah. Believe It Steelers podcast. We are recording this the Wednesday. It's going to be due out on Friday on Christmas Eve ahead of all of the week 16 action. Like we've got Christmas Day games. We've got football, football and more football. But Steelers and Chiefs, Ike. And there's a lot of players on the COVID-19 list between these two teams on the Chiefs, both Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey, the two playmakers for Kansas City. But then four players on the Steelers 53-man roster, the headliner being linebacker David Bush, also Montrevious Adams, Zach Banner, and Marcus Allen as well. A lot of time between now and Sunday, some of these players could clear and uh, test negative, be back in the game come Sunday. I just hope we don't get a postponed game at this point, too, because I know a lot of Chiefs fans were up in arms yesterday saying, how can we play this game without Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey? Steelers had to do it earlier this season when Big Ben was right. out against the Detroit Lions. So like, it's almost like an injury in the NFL. It's like you got to roll with the punches, but we'll see right. between now and then who ends up playing on Sunday. Yeah, man, I hope everybody is healthy and ready yeah. to play on Sunday, but that's the good side of me, the bad side, selfishly speaking. Tyreek and Travis Kelsey, y'all can stay home and y'all can get y'all some rest, man. This it's Christmas time. Y'all been very good. Y'all been nice, not naughty. But go on, man. Get get a few days of that bed rest, especially when it's time to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. I okay, that's some sound strategy there too, because if those two guys are healthy, 
among the best tandems in the league with the matchup problems and the matchup nightmares that they both create. Hill's got elite speed. And then Kelsey's just, you've got to bracket him, his size and speed. You put a linebacker on him, he's too fast. You put it just a regular DB on him, he's too big. But it's like, yeah, I, I'm with you. They can stay home. They can stay home in Kansas City on Sunday at Arrowhead if the Chiefs are without those two players. Like, look, there's a reason why. This game opened up as a 10-point spread in favor of Kansas wow. City. It's off the board right now at the time of this recording, recording on Wednesday afternoon. So we'll see what that line ends up being before kickoff. But at the time of this recording right now, you, you can't bet on this game right now because even the odds makers aren't really sure who's going to play and what's going to happen, who's going to suit up on Sunday. No, that's tough right now with that COVID. And honestly, that COVID has been going around. If you just look at the holiday season, I feel like a lot of teams been dealing with that COVID. That's why a lot of these games been been pushed back. A lot of these guys got family members and probably f- friends who they've been around coming to the house. They don't, they don't know what's coming to the house when they talk about COVID, uh, the COVID nineteen. So just hopefully these guys get better ASAP. Hopefully they can test, you know, negative and not positive when they do take the test. But how I look at it, man, when I look at Thanksgiving and when I look at the Christmas holidays, man, it's a lot of guys who are not in their particular environment because of the holidays and the family and friends coming towards their house. Interesting take there, Ike. And I'll say this though, too, the chiefs are due to get back a few players who are on their COVID-19 list. So that includes mm-hmm. linebacker Willie Gay and then Josh Gordon. They were both seen on the practice field today. So it appears that they'll be back from the COVID list too. Legereus Sneed, a cornerback for the chiefs is also back. And then rookie defensive end, Josh Kando, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but um, they've both, they're slated to return from either COVID injuries, what have you, too. But coming into this game, too, I was talking about Travis Kelsey earlier, Kansas City's second leading receiver. He's accounted for more than 1,000 yards through the air, seven touchdowns this season. And it was announced earlier in the last few weeks that Kelsey's had to do his seventh Pro Bowl at the tight end position. He's among the best in the league at that position. And like I said, matchup nightmares. Now, on the other side of the ball for the Steelers, speaking of the tight end position, Pat Fryer moved two in concussion protocol. So if he's not able to go, look to Zach Gentry and the rest of the tight ends that are on the Steelers roster. You know, Mike Tomlin says that they're not going to seek outside help who the Steelers have on the active 53-man roster and then who might be elevated from the practice squad as well is what Pittsburgh will go with too. Fryer has been very reliable. Six touchdowns as a rookie this, this season for the Steelers. Yeah, of course, T ain't about to go out of bounds when it comes down to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the tight end situation. He's going to keep it in-house, and that's what he usually do. That's what he pride himself off of when I played for him. That's exactly what he did. You know, his motto was the next man up. As far as the Kansas City Chiefs, man, when you want to talk about Travis Kelsey, you know, for, for, for him and Patrick Mahomes, man, I just look at Travis Kelsey as sleep number. And if anybody knows what sleep number is, that's a bed that they have on commercials all the time. Whether it's commercial on TV or info commercial, man, it's called sleep number. Patrick Mahomes is very kept, very comfortable for a bow, throwing it to in crucial situations to Travis Kelsey. So that's why I call him sleep number, man, because the bed feels so good. And every time, you know, Patrick down bad, when I mean down bad in a good way, is, man, I need to play. Who do I look for? I'll look for Travis Kelsey. After I look for Travis Kelsey, I'll look for Tyree Hill. Them the two guys to look at. So Andy Reid does a great job, and Eric Bieniemy. They do a great job of, man, just finding ways, formation, and getting them guys open. Uh, whether it comes over tips and tendencies, what they see from the opposing defense, they always find a way to make a play. But what I know from, from, from anybody, if you just look at Tom Brady and who his favorite receiver has been for the last, you know, 10, 10 years, man, you got to look at Rob Gronkowski. If you look at what, what Patrick Mahomes and his favorite receiver is, when he needs to play, when the game is on the line, it's, it's sleep number, a.k.a. Travis Kelsey. So, that's just that's just what it is, man. So hopefully these guys do play, and I'm saying that, but I'm kind of lying. But for the Steelers <laughs> standpoint, <laughs> from the Steelers standpoint, um, I don't mind them guys sitting down and sleeping on a sleep number when they do play the Pittsburgh Steelers. See, you're saying sleep number as a comfort, almost a comfort blanket for a quarterback when they're under pressure. I thought it was going to be from the standpoint of they're putting opposing defenses to sleep, Ike. So I I see what you're doing there with your analogy too, though. But also, Steelers going to be going up against Melvin Ingram 
player that they traded for a sixth round pick. I hope Pittsburgh can get a little bit of revenge because I, I know we're publicly, up. I know publicly that, <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're, they were polite about it, but I think there was right. some bad Melvin. blood between the two sides, yeah. between Melvin Ingram yeah. and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, between, between High Smith and company, you know, Melvin Ingram felt like, man, he was way better than whoever there was in front of him, whoever there was giving the reps. And at the time, it was High Smith. So I'm sure when he playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, he going to bring that extra little on. Like, man, y'all think I didn't have it no more. So I get all that part. It's just like, it's just like, uh, you always want to, you always want to do better than your ex. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at me now. They had a Chris Brown and, and, and Buster Rhymes and Lil Wayne song called Look At Me Now, I'm Getting Paper. So I'm sure Melvin Ingram is feeling that way. You know, they got a better record than the Pittsburgh Steelers. If they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, they'll stand at the number one spot in the AFC. They've been hot. Their defense has been playing real good. And a lot of people have been saying because it's, it's because of Melvin Ingram. So I'm sure Melvin Ingram, you know, for his get back, not only would he like a win, but he wouldn't mind getting a couple of sacks, a forced fumble, a tackle for loss, something like that. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> we, we talked about this on the Believe in Steelers podcast earlier this year. Mm-hmm. I was at the Chiefs Titans game in October. Chiefs haven't lost a game since that. It was a week seven matchup, October the 24th. Mm-hmm. And it's been the Chiefs defense that's been most impressive, right. in my mm-hmm. opinion. Right. The acquisition of Ingram allows, what is it, Chris Jones to move from the outside to the inside. Uh, I know, is it Frank Clark on the Chiefs defensive line? But this Correct. Chiefs defense has been what has carried this, this team. And I thought that they were dead to rights after that week seven loss because Tennessee absolutely destroyed Kansas City 27 to three. I was there. The Chiefs also had, they had Tyree Kill, they had uh, uh, Travis Kelsey on the field. And offensively, they couldn't do anything. And for whatever reason, they flipped the script. And now that looks like they're sitting in the driver's seat. They've been among the hottest teams in the league, maybe other than the New England Patriots, really since that week seven game. So they've figured things out. They've righted the ship. After week seven, if you would have asked me, I would have said, I don't think the Chiefs are going to make the playoffs. A lot of people buried them, me being one of them. And now they're in the driver's seat in the AFC. It's incredible the turnaround that they've had. And I really think it's been because of the defensive unit of Kansas City. So when you get a guy like Melvin Ingram and you look at what Coach Thomas said in training camp, his words to describe Melvin Ingram was a running game bully. So when you, and that's exactly what the Kansas City Chiefs was missing. They was missing their attitude, they was missing their grit. They was missing somebody who wanted to stop the run. And the reason why they was missing somebody who wanted to stop the run was they was just used to the Kansas City offense just throwing up points, and they was just rushing the passer. So when you're rushing the passer, that's your whole man- mindset. That's your whole attitude that you get turned over, you get picks, you get sacks, you get forced fumbles. That's all you know. But once your offense ain't your offense no more, and you just got to – and everybody to figure your offense out, and they're playing cover two – and now everybody wants to run the ball on you to slow the game down and your mentality and your personnel and your and your personality ain't like that no more. You bring a guy like Melvin Ingram in who say, man, y'all can have all this pass and stuff, but I do I do know to win championships, y'all had to stop the run. To win championships when y'all won when y'all did win that Super Bowl, y'all did run the ball in a game to win a game. So let me go ahead and bring this mindset and this attitude back up here. So since I'm the stepchild, because if I was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs, I'd probably think the same way like y'all. Man, I'm rushing the passer because I know my offense is going to score more points than y'all. But now my offense ain't scoring more points than y'all. You bring a Melvin Ingram in, who, like I said, man, is who is a run bully in that in that run game, man. It just changed the mindset. You move Chris back into the inside. You move Frank back to the inside. Now, now, now you just get a domino effect and everybody respected Melvin Ingram. So now you wake everybody up like, oh, okay. This, this, that old school back to football, what we used to do, we just got comfortable and we got spoiled because Patrick Mahomes and company were just outscoring everybody. Ike, speaking of the old school, you played at mm-hmm. Arrowhead Stadium four times in your Loud. career. 12 Loud. year. Yes, yes. Can you explain to our listeners Loud. and viewers what it's like Loud. playing there? And I can Loud. tell you what I've experienced. And I, I've been there a, a few times, but you played there four times. Explain what it's yeah. like. I mean, again, for, to the listeners and viewers. 
first of all, um, when I play, for everybody who's listening to the Believe in Pod, Steelers podcast with Mark and I, man, I play with Deontay Hall. So whenever y'all have time, please Google the X-Man, Deontay Hall. You talking about a special teams returner? You talking about a guy, all he need is one or two carries. He's going to take two to the house. That was Deontay Hall when it came down to the Kansas City Chiefs. Also, Kansas City Chiefs fans and Pittsburgh Steelers fans. I know y'all remember a guy named Tony Gonzalez. He's going to go. He's already in the Hall of Fame. I know y'all remember a running back called Priest Holmes. <laughs> Priest Holmes. He was special like a mother mother. So when I when I look when I when I look Snoop minutes man I can go down the line with y'all receivers when I when I look down the line I'm like man KC been doing this but the one thing I do remember about KC y'all loud as hell y'all one of the loudest stadiums I've ever played in and here's why usually when you're sitting on the bench and you're the away team you got at least twenty to thirty feet away from the stands. So you can talk to him from a distance, but no, not in Arrowhead, not in KC. You're so close up on the fans. You can smell exactly what they ate the night before. <laughs> or you had a hot dog and chili. And with that hot dog and chili, you had a middle light. And with that middle light, I can already smell your goddamn tablet and what you did. You went to betonline.ag. <laughs> and after that, after that, you wind up going. After that, you wind up going online, too, and you went to lightbox.com, and you ordered some jewelry for his or hers. <laughs> That's how close the fans are to, to the players in Arrowhead. When I say the conversations were like we was talking on the phone live in person, live in person, Mark, I couldn't believe it. I said, bro, they can't school these people back. They was like, nah, I, this is how the stadium was built. We can't move, we can't move these people back. <laughs> Like that says a lot coming from you because I know you were the king of trash talk and you say you can smell what's on their breath. From the dinner before. I'm talking about from the <laughs> night before. Yeah. If I if I if I can if I can smell your fingers off what you hit on the tablet and what you type, that's pretty damn close, Mark. <laughs> well, it's like you can guess which barbecue <laughs> joint that they went to in Kansas City because there are a lot of them in the Kansas City, Missouri area. It's almost like what pizza is to say a Chicago or New York or what mm-hmm. the cheesesteak is to Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Kansas City is known for its barbecue. So you say right. that and you'll be able to specify, oh, that's Jack Stacks. That's Q39. That's all the different kinds of barbecues that the Kansas City, all, all, uh, Oklahoma all Joe's. I mean, there are so many of them. Yeah. If you if you was to play, if y'all was to hit the field doing a game, Mark, you and the Believe in Steelers podcast crew and the Brinks TV crew and the BetOnline.ag crew and the Lightbox crew, I'm, I guarantee you, you will smell every barbecue you just named, either on the breath or a thought or on somebody's fingers that didn't wash their hands the night before. Amazing, Ike. Before we go to our Lightbox ad read, Ike, I want to give a quick shout out. Clyde edwards Hilaire has played well since returning from injury was a little bit harsh on him earlier this year. He's been part of that resurgence for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's played in four games now. He's gotten in the end zone three times in the last four games since returning from an injury. So I got to give credit where credit is due. When he's able to get going, he's getting able to get into the mix with Kelsey, with Hill. Chiefs offense, the the, the Steelers are going to have their hand full on Sunday, regardless of who suits up for Kansas City. Clyde Edwards, a has certainly been a part of that, too. Yeah, it's big boy football. You know, you want to get your name in the paper. When I coach my kids, I tell them, get your name in the paper. How the heck you get your name in the paper? You make plays. That's all you do. You get in the paint and you make plays all day. Whether you're on defense and you're forcing fumbles and you're getting interceptions, you're getting your name in the paper. Whether you're on offense and you're scoring touchdowns and you're making big plays, you're getting in your name, you're getting your name in the paper. And that's that's what Clyde doing right now, man. He's just getting his name in the paper. He's playing bigger than the size. At first, I thought it was hurt, so that's why I thought he wasn't running the way I saw him. I saw him running at LSU. I thought Clyde was kind of hurt. Now it looks like Clyde is all the way back healthy. I thought he took his time, and the organization, and Coach Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy, they kind of took their time on bringing him back slowly, and that was perfect for him. So now he's running, even though he's short. He's running like a Maurice Jones Drew, 
when it comes down to running that ball. And that's exactly what the Kansas City Chiefs need. They understand they understand how important that run game is, not only to the offense, but to the defensive side. So glad to see Clyde running like he was running at LSU. That means a lot to me, Ike, because I know the respect that you have for MJD going up against mm-hmm. him in your playing career, but then right. also the relationship that you form. We work together at the NFL Network as well. So that means that when you, when you compare the two, and that's not to say, oh, Clyde edwards Lair is Maurice jones Drew, sure. but when you put I'm him in that body. same realm and that same right. breath and right. that same sentence, that's immediately where my mind goes, where it's like, gotcha. wow, the respect that you have for MJD, I think that's saying a lot what Clyde edwards Lair has brought to this Chiefs offense since returning from injury. But Ike, there's never a dull moment here on this show. We're going to take a quick break to tell our listeners and viewers about Lightbox Diamonds Jewelry and Lightbox Diamonds right. lets people all over the world get their sparkle on, get their shine on. It's the time of year. You know, we're only a few days away from Christmas Day, but you might be thinking about popping that special question to that special someone, maybe sometime in the new year. Maybe you need a last minute Christmas gift idea as well. Want to tell our listeners and viewers about LightboxJewelry.com. Let's people do that all over the world. Man, hopefully, hopefully everybody paid their light bills. So if you didn't pay your light bill, man, make sure you go to Lightbox Jury. It's no, lightboxjury.com is never a dull moment at all, man. I ain't talking about them big, fat number two pencils in the 80s when I grew up. I'm talking about them small, sharp number two pencils, in which is very sharp. So Lightbox, man, make sure y'all check out lightboxjury.com, man. It's never a dull moment. Go with the skinny number two pencil, not the fat thick one I had when I was growing up. <laughs> Again, lightboxjewelry.com. Add some sparkle to your holiday shopping. Ike, week 16 is here. And like I had to double and triple and quadruple check that. We're almost into the playoffs. Only three games left in the regular season. And we've got a lot of action to break down. And on Christmas Day, we'll keep it in the AFC North. Browns at Packers, Green Bay favored by seven in this one. And I know I said take Tom Brady as your NFL MVP favorite, but right now at the time of this recording on Wednesday afternoon, Aaron Rodgers, the man, the myth, the legend himself, is the favorite right now to win NFL MVP at plus 150. Tom Brady not far behind at plus 175. And I want to remind you, with Tom Brady in this this game, if you're between Rodgers and Brady to pick NFL MVP – Look at the Buccaneers' final three games. They have Panthers, Jets, and Panthers again. So I think Brady is going, and the Bucs are going to respond and recoup after getting shut out on Sunday night football against the Saints. But Aaron Rodgers is on a tear. Cleveland was without multiple starters in their Week 15 loss to the Raiders, and that included both starting quarterback Baker Mayfield, backup quarterback Case Keenum, their head coach Kevin Stefanski, they're looking to regroup, and if the, the Browns really want any shot of making the playoffs, they're going to have to upset Green Bay at Lambeau on Christmas Day. It's a tough ask for the Browns. I'm going to take the Packers to not only win, but to cover the seven points against the Cleveland Browns. <clears throat> yeah, so you can't deny AR-12 coming into training camp late, having a crazy offseason, losing to the Saints the first game, mm-hmm. and everybody thought it was over. You can't deny AR-12 going with a depleted team. I think he was missing 11 starters against the Arizona Cardinals when it was hot and winning in that ball game. You can't deny AR-12 changing his feet work. So what, so what, I'm, what I mean by feet work, like he's doing like acrobatic ballet moves as a quarterback that's unheard of. And we ain't even talking about the angles he's throwing to that. And we said this, and we talked about this before in the Believe It's Still His podcast show, Mark. Aaron Rodgers has been throwing angles way before Patrick Mahomes been throwing them angles. And he's been dropping lasers way before Patrick Mahomes has been dropping lasers. He was dropping lasers on us in, in 2010 in the Super Bowl. Believe me, I know. I saw a person live on deck. So when I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers, when I'm looking at Everybody know where he's going when it's crunch time. Devontae Adams, they still can't stop him. When I'm looking at a, a Aaron Rodgers, a AR-12, he's maturing as a quarterback and as a person. So in the fourth quarter, when it's six minutes left, he's giving the ball to A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. So when I'm looking at an Aaron Rodgers and 
You see Vasquez, number 83, man, he's finally coming to his own. So when I look at when I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers and Finley, who is stepping up, but once he was a Jaguar, he's been in the league 12 plus years. That's Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers ain't doing nothing but having fun. So yeah, he is the MVP. I think Aaron Rodgers is looking at 35 and four, 30, 36 and four, 36 touchdowns, 35 touchdowns, four interceptions. That's Aaron Rodgers. You really can't say Aaron Rodgers ain't been Aaron Rodgers. Right now, Aaron Rodgers has been like Superman right now. So Aaron Rodgers, is, he just been playing out his mind. I love Tom Brady to death for, for a 44-year-old and what he's doing right now. Just jumped off the boat onto a whole nother boat, meaning a whole nother organization with the Tampa Bay Bucks. During COVID, not having a offseason, learning a whole new system and winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's why you call him statue, not the goat. Y'all people better catch on to what we're saying. But at the same time, for the 2021 season, man, there is no other person who's been through more, who's put themselves through more, who's who's who showed out more. And every every time, week to week, he's just proving himself on why he's the league MVP. And that's AR-12, which y'all call him Aaron Rodgers. Ike, I need to correct one thing you said in yes, the whole monologue, and it was beautiful. You say AJ Dillon, I say tree trunk Dillon because of how thick his legs are. The oh, thunder and lightning I'm combination right. he has with Aaron Jones. Oh mm-hmm. my Lord. And Rodgers, you mentioned the play of Rodgers playing well despite the painful toe injury. Why do I bring all this up with the legs? I take a look over my shoulder, the leg lamp from a Christmas story. I've got it all <laughs> on the theme for today's show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, hey, listen here. You've been a step ahead a lot of times. So I ain't even about to argue with you no more, man. You just said some stuff I thought you was crazy, Mark, but it wind up coming to fruition. So, man, I'm going to go on and just buy it out, man. Say whatever you need to say. It's Christmas time anyway. I'm in the Christmas spirit. Me too. I will say this about Rodgers, Ike. He's coming off an NFL MVP season a year ago, in all seriousness. Mm -hmm. If he is to win NFL MVP, and whether this is fair or not, this will happen. There's going to be some media members that think that his commentary on the Pat McAfee show with regards to his immunization and COVID, I'm not going to get into all of that. But when it comes to the NFL MVP race, I think there are some writers who will hold that against him. Good, bad, indifferent. I'm just telling you reality of what's going to happen. I know that that narrative, that storyline might not come into existence now, three weeks out, but I am telling you that is going to happen. Good, bad, and different. I'm going to leave it at that. But there are going to be some media members that hold that against him and say, I'm not going to vote for him for NFL MVP, even if he is deserving of it. Again, we're entering week 16. He's the favorite. I look at the schedules ahead too. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are going to recoup. They're going to win their final three games. I'm telling you right now, when you've got the Panthers, the Jets, and then the Panthers again, I, I'm, I try to call it how I see it. I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Mar, they, if they do that to Aaron Rodgers, they hate him. So by the end of the day, is what you do on yeah, the field. I, I, if you if you worry about everything off the field, let me take, let me spend a day in the life with all these writers. Let me spend a day in the life with these writers. See how you are off camera and not at work. And let me and let me hold that against you. Since y'all want to talk that kind of smack. So let's just swap let's let's just swap places. You act see and that's what I don't get. You get a day in life with me. Can I get a day in life with you? I'm gonna get a day in life with you, and I'm not gonna judge what you do out of work or what you do at home. So we're yeah. going to talk about the money, the contracts, the paper. But by the end of the day, we still are human is what I want to say. So, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, he lied about the situation. He tried to finagle the situation, and he was dead wrong. It's not saying it's not saying nobody had wrote something wrong, missed a few sentences, didn't put a period on something, something, had, something, something happened at the house. Ain't nobody saying that about you. But I get it. I'm in the spotlight, and I'm speaking as Aaron Rodgers. But at the same time. Can y'all reward me for what I do on my job? And that's all we want. As a writer, can you reward me for what I'm doing on my job? As an analyst, can you reward me for how good my job is? Heck with everything else. And that's all Aaron Rodgers saying. Can y'all reward? Yeah, I know y'all. It's going to be speculations. And I did what I did. And maybe y'all do want to hold that against me. But 
talk to them about what I'm doing on my job as a quarterback in the NFL for the 2021 season. Is it an A or is it an A plus? Some of y'all are gonna give me an A. <laughs> some of y'all are gonna give me an A plus. <laughs> That's what y'all are gonna do for me. So go so, ahead. It sounds like you're gonna go with the Packers. League MVP. 100. Okay. percent I'm going with the pack. I'm not even a cheese head, but I like that fatty cheese. I like that blue cheese. And the reason why I like their blue cheese because they got the new hundreds. So the new hundreds are blue, and the young people call them cheese. So I like their blue cheese, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, save me a few slices of Swiss and then provolone, Ike, and then <laughs> the pepper jack as well. Oh, An underrated oh, that cheese. Jack. That, that pepper jack, boy, you – see, you just name all them sandwich cheese. Every cheese you just named, that provolone, that pepper jack, and that ch- – all that you put on the sandwich, you put that on a good poor boy. I just left New Orleans for for our, uh, for our, um, college football bowl game, and that's all they had on the goddamn sandwiches. But every cheese you the name is sandwich cheese, but that cheese so good. Or if you do like red grapes, and particularly a cab, and particularly a Austin Hope, you can have all the cheeses you want. Just make sure they block. Yeah, we'll get a full charcuterie board, Ike. And you met, you mentioned the feta earlier. I do have a very good baked feta cheese pasta. And I've given this to friends of mine. And I they tell it. me, like, Mark, we don't need, I don't like feta cheese. And I go, just try the pasta and see what you think. And they're just like, wow, this is really good. And then before you know it, the whole pan of pasta is already gone. But Ike, speaking of the MVPs, yeah. we'll keep it in on Christmas Day, Colts mm-hmm. and Cardinals. Colts are eight mm-hmm. and six. Kyler Murray went from NFL MVP favorite earlier in the year to where his play has fallen off. We'll talk about him in just a second. But Jonathan Taylor, the running back, his MVP odds have skyrocketed. I'm going to say this right right now. His stats are head and shoulders above any other running back in the league. If Derrick Henry were still healthy and playing, I think he would be in that conversation. But what I will say with Jonathan Taylor, the Colts are eight and six entering this game. I think the Colts would need to win at least three of their last four games for Taylor to have serious consideration for NFL MVP. That starts on Christmas Day against the Cardinals. Again, Colts are eight and six right now. If they don't get to at least 11 wins, like if the Colts are 10 and seven, there's no way Mm -hmm. the league's going to award an NFL MVP to a team that's 10 and seven. 11 and six, I think, opens the door for that conversation. All right, so take away the records. So did King Henry get rewarded a league MVP when he rushed for the two piece, mm-hmm. two thousand yards? No, sir. No. And he was he was on his way this year before he got hurt for doing the same thing. So when I look at a Jonathan Taylor, I look at okay, King Henry rushed for two thousand yards, didn't get the league MVP. Jonathan Taylor isn't about to get 2,000 yards, so they're not going to give him the MVP. King Henry this year, if he didn't get hurt, he was on his way to getting 2,000 yards again. So why the heck would you give Jonathan Taylor the league MVP and King Henry didn't get the league MVP last year with 2,000 yards? That's what I don't get. So I think who's ever voting should look at that part. Like, who's the most valuable player, not only in the league, but to that team? King Henry is the most valuable player to that team at the time. Jonathan Taylor, is the, Jonathan Taylor is the most valuable player to the Colts at this time. So yeah, I know, I know, I know it's a, a quarterback driven league. But when you got guys who rushing for 17, 1800 yards, and these guys getting between twenty five and thirty five carries, and these teams are winning, and they still stacking the box with them to ten guys trying to hit one guy. You got to give these guys a shot to give the league's MVP because when you want to talk about the quarterback situation, only five guys hit the quarterback. Either you got the four down lineman and you blitzing, you blitzing one extra, so that's five. But when you want to run a ball, man, you talking about the D line, you talk about the secondary guys, and you talk about the linebackers. So damn man, you got eleven guys trying to hit a running back. So why not consider a running back to be the least MVP. Not only that, man, if you're just watching what Cooper Cup is doing at that wide receiver position, man, he's doing some unprecedented (laughs) stats in what he's doing right now. He's going for the trifecta. You know what I'm saying? He's first in every category when it comes down to the NFL. That's hard to do as a receiver. So I think think nowadays, man, we've just been so close-minded. We, as the voters, 
for the NFL and just, okay, it's a quarterback driven league. Only quarterbacks can get the league MVP. Now they starting to open up a little bit. Not saying John Taylor or Cooper Cup will get the league MVP, but I think down the line, when you get a guy like Cooper Cup in two or three years and he's going for 2,000 yards, you know, receiving and Jonathan, Th- Jonathan Taylor, King Henry is going for 2,000 yards rushing, they will highly consider instead of a quarterback every time that these guys are just just as valuable to their team and the league as court- than quarterbacks. I'm sorry. Great historic perspective there, too. Right? 2012 was the last time a running back won MVP. Adrian Peterson ran it, mm-hmm. uh, ran for 2,000 yards that season for the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings went 10 and 6 in that season that Peterson ran for 2,000 yards. So if you don't at least get to that 2,000 yard mark as a running back, you're, you're spot on. Now, I also want to talk about Kyler Murray. And you're talking about a quarterback who is slight of frame, listed at 5'10, about 207 pounds. What I worry about him is a narrative that's out there now of last season, he had a shoulder injury. He rushes back, comes back for the Cardinals, tries to play, just wasn't quite right. He had an ankle injury earlier this year and missed a few games. Colt McCoy fills the void. But does Kyler Murray rush back from an ankle injury because he just hasn't quite been right for the Cardinals? Now, this comes with the caveat of DeAndre Hopkins is likely out for the rest of the season. He's not due back with the torn MCL injury until maybe the NFC Championship or the Super Bowl if the Cardinals were to go that far. But you're talking about a Cardinals team that entered last week with the NFL's best record. They're now 10-4 and four after their loss to the Detroit Lions, and the Cardinals have lost four of their last seven games, not trending in the right direction. And again, I can't help but think with Murray, he's slight of frame. He's not one of your bigger quarterbacks. It's not so much his struggles passing the ball is what I noticed, but in the loss to the Detroit Lions, Ike, Kyler Murray, who re- depends on his his speed and his quickness, his ability to scramble, had only four rushing attempts for three yards in a blowout loss to the Lions. That's what I look at because that's what he relies upon as a young quarterback in this league. Passing's going to be here and there. Remember, he was still playing baseball a few years ago. We thought he was going to be in the in Major League Baseball, not the NFL. But when I see that his ability to run the football is diminished, that's where I kind of scratch my head and think, hmm, maybe it is that ankle injury that's still lingering. He's trying to get back, be there for his team and get back in that MVP conversation. I I just I don't like the way that the Cardinals are trending right now. They've lost their last two in a row. And I'm now rambling here. Hop in. Yeah. So Detroit is the broke version of the Tennessee Titans, which is bully ball. That's exactly what they play. They don't care whether they win or lose it. They're just going to fight you every play. And I look at the Arizona Cardinals, and I look at them as a finesse team. Now, you take DeAndre Hopkins out. I look at DeAndre Hopkins as the slot receiver, the tight end, and the, and the X or the X or the Z receiver. So, for me, he down there played four positions. Now, you take that comfort zone from, from Kyle LaMurray, he has nobody that he's really comfortable with throwing to unless you make him throw it to that person. So if I'm a defensive coordinator, all I'm depending on and looking at is Kyler Murray James Conner. I'm not worrying about A.J. AJ Green because he's not what he once was. I'm not worrying about Curtin because I can have a guy who can run with him deep. And more who's a rookie, man, I ain't even worrying about the slot because we're going to bring enough pressure to get the Kyler Murray because I don't, need, I don't even think he trusts his rookie receiver right now. So when I look at that situation, that's exactly what I'm looking at as a DC. As long as DeAndre Hopkins is out and he's injured, I'm not worrying about the Arizona Cardinals no more because that's, to me, how valuable DeAndre Hopkins was to this team. He was a slot guy. He was either the X or the Z receiver, which means them two outside receivers. Or you can damn near put him at tight end and he was going to give anybody hell because he catch everything. So you take that away from him, which was Kyler Murray's go to or safety valve, it's a wrap. So I'm I'm gonna protect, I'm gonna protect, which means I'm gonna protect is I'm not gonna run past Kyler Murray no more if I'm a defense end. I'm gonna run up to him, make sure he doesn't get outside me, make sure he steps up because he's short. So I'm gonna tell one of my defensive tackles, two of my defensive tackles, y'all guys put your hands up, knock the ball down. And if you saw when they played the LA Rams, man, one of the guys got an interception because man his trajectory because he was short, he just wound up 
he just wound up catching the ball over a lost ball. And I'm sure Kyler Murray thought he could throw it over his head, but the guy just jumped up and caught it. So that's what you got to deal with. But for now, man, since DeAndre Hopkins is out, out, out of the offense for the for the Arizona Cardinals, Mark, man, I'm not even tripping. I'm stacking the box. So I'm making our receivers beat me one-on-one. I'm making sure James Conner don't run crazy because he's the personality on that offense, low key. And I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it even and level head with Kyler Murray, make sure he don't get outside that pocket to make sure he got to step up to the guys who's six three, who's six four at a defensive tackle position. Ike, this is a straight up pick 'em. There is no favorite. You can flip a coin. Who you got between Colts and Cardinals? I got Colts. I got Colts. Yeah, I, li- I like the Colts yeah. as well. And it goes back to yeah. what we're, we talk about all the time, too. We're in December now. Your ability to run yeah, the football. Right and Yes, sir. <laughs> Shout out to Quentin Nelson, too. I think he's a big part of that Colts running game, too. I know Jonathan Taylor's getting a lot of the praise, but you right. talk about the big uglies up front on the interior. Quentin Nelson among the best offensive guards in the league as well. So he's doing his thing for Indy. Ike in the AFC North, we're going to have, we're going to find out who the leader of the division is Ravens and Bengals. The Bengals are two and a half point favorites. This might be the matchup I'm most excited to watch other than Chiefs Steelers this weekend. Right. Take this in any direction you'd like to because there's a lot we can go between Ravens and Bengals. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with the Ravens. Like this this kid, what it is, Tyron Huntley? Tyler Huntley? <laughs> Tyler Huntley, yes. <laughs> Ty- Tyler Huntley. <laughs> Man, the boy the boy playing with a the boy playing with a lot of confidence. You know what I'm saying? He's throwing that ball without even thinking twice. He's throwing that ball with confidence. He's throwing that ball in tight windows right now. Um, Tyler Hudley, man, and it, it, it looked like his first couple of games when Lamar Jackson was hurt, he was kind of timid on running the ball because he was looking slow. Now he's looking even faster, you know, now, now that he got a couple of games under his belt. So when you get that in that defense and that running game, and I don't know, for some reason, man, the Ravens, man, they missing like five starters on offense and down to the five starters or running backs and they still find a way to put themselves in position. And we talked about, you know, the Ravens going to, going in Green Bay, playing a tight playing a tight game in Green Bay and why he went for two and I thought he should have went for one. That's Coach Harbaugh was because Green Bay didn't want to see Huntley in OT if they would have had that coin flip because the last two possessions they wound up stopping Green Bay and Huntley wound up giving them a touchdown position to win the ball game, at least playoff position to win that ball game. So I'm a, I'm a rock I'm a rock with the the Baltimore Ravens, man. I think the Baltimore Ravens, this is exactly what they built for. They built for December football. Um, they finally got a young QB who was behind Lamar Jackson. You know, Lamar Jackson is just Lamar Jackson. He's spectacular. I just look at Lamar Jackson like lightboxjury.com. Never a dull moment when I'm looking at him. So. I'm just going to rock with Lamar at the same time. But since Huntley is doing this thing, man, I'm going to go with the Ravens on this one over the Cincinnati Bengals, bro. Okay, I'll take Joe Cool and the Bengals. And, yeah, Joe Burrow gets all the praise. But our guy Joe right. Mixon moving the chains at the line of scrimmage. Right, right, right. Having, right, right. like, the best season behind Jonathan Taylor in the AFC. Right. So I'm going to go against right. you here. Now, okay. I, well, I'll say this about this game too, Ike, and I haven't seen this yet. But if Huntley continues to play well for the Ravens, I can't wait to see which analyst comes out and says, oh, the Ravens are better with Huntley at quarterback than Lamar Jackson. It's like, wait a second. Do we not remember that Lamar Jackson was the league's MVP two seasons back? Like, do we not remember that? They also won a playoff game with Jackson. I haven't seen it yet, but you've been in these production meetings like I have, like where it's who's going to be the one one to say it. And it's going to be, and it's going to say, it's not to take away from what Tyler Huntley's accomplished right. filling in for Lamar Jackson, but I'm telling you right now, you'll see this on studio shows. It, it depending if he continues to play well, you're going to see it. I promise you that. No, 100. It's it's, it's 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 small talk about him right now on who is better, a better passer. They saying they made a, a better passer right now than Lamar Jackson right now. Um, they smoking. I don't know what they smoking. They're not smoking that one of a kind. <laughs> Cigar. That's what the hell they need to be smoking that one of a kind cigar. But at the same time, man, if, if I'm if I'm the Baltimore Ravens and the offense on plan, I think it's always good to have two good quarterbacks who understand the system. So after this season is up, 
in the offseason, and we're going to talk about this too because I guarantee you they could do it. They need to give him a two-year deal. They need to give they need to give Ty a two-year deal to solidify just in case with Lamar, just in case the kind of offense you like to run, just in case he gets hurt, that the man is satisfied and he's comfortable and he don't mind being the backup for a couple of more years under Lamar, getting his feet wet, and maybe he might take off after that. But after this, after this offseason, I think the Baltimore Ravens will give Tyler Huntley a two-year deal, some good money for him, a good money enough for him to stay. Let me piggyback <clears throat> off that, Ike, and then we got to get to a few more picks. Mm-hmm. It's not just about Huntley in a possible extension. It's leverage so you don't have to overpay for Lamar Jackson for his contract extension. Because if Lamar wants to make, say, more than the $43 million of an average annual salary that is due to fellow 2018 draft classmate Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, the Ravens can say, we've got your replacement at a lot cheaper of a rate. Huntley, you come in. Lamar Jackson, you can go elsewhere. As well as Huntley's played, as well as he can that's, continue that's to learn in a tough, backup bro. role, it's it's leverage for the Baltimore Ravens as well to keep Tyler Huntley in a Ravens uniform. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't doing that. They ain't doing that with Huntley, though, Mark. You know, Huntley ain't getting on a Madden 2022 cover or the 23 cover or the 24 cover. So he's, I mean, we got to just give it to Lamar, man. He's special. So I don't think that's going to ever be a leverage. You know, we're talking about, and this, and this this is this is this is two great point guards. We talking about you know John Stockton or Isaiah Thomas. You know what I'm saying? It just depending on what style you want. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 how I look at it, man. Right now, man, ain't nobody really playing better. I mean, Lamar won a lot of games for the Baltimore Ravens by himself. Like he had he had to get mutated in a game to win games for the Baltimore Ravens, and you already know what he was going to do. If he didn't see pass, he was going to run, and people still couldn't stop him. So Lamar been doing this for years, man, between, you know, that class of guys, Baker Mayfield and Josh Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and company. Man, he has the better record out of all of them. And he was the yeah. last quarterback pick yep. in the in the first <clears throat> in the first round. So that's that's saying a lot, you know. So we can speculate and we can talk on what he needs to work on. You know what? <laughs> he needs to work on a better record. And his record is better than everybody y'all saying who didn't got paid. So I'm sure Lamar Jackson and his mom, when it comes down to the table, all she got to say is the guys y'all paid before my son, look at their record, look at my son's record. Look at the opportunities my son and look how many games he had that he closed out in the fourth quarter. And what they're really going to say, they really can't say too much, especially if you look at this year, this year before the season, season even started, man, we're talking about, Four cornerbacks, starting corner, four starting cornerbacks, five running backs, two wide receivers, and they still in position. And we're talking about it on this Believe It's Still the Podcast. Mark and I, we're talking about it, bro. Who's going to be at the top of the AFC North? And the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. And that's all because of Lamar Jackson. So, yeah, if, if I'm his agent, this is exactly what I'm saying when it comes down to putting that money on the table. Man, I have a depleted team, and who was looking for? Do you not see what the coach wanted to do, Jim Harbaugh? I me, mean, yeah, Jim Harbaugh. Did you do you not see what he said? What he asked me when it was crunch time, when it was fourth down, and when it was goal? Hey, Lamar, what you want to do? Now you tell me what other coach have that kind of relationship with his quarterback, Coach Tomlin. As much as Big Ben is going to the Hall of Fame, he's not asking Big Ben what you want to do. We're punting or we're kicking the field goal. Coach Belichick, Coach Bruce Arians, they're not asking Tom Brady what you want to do. Either we're kicking the field goal or we're going for the punt. That's just what it is. So that relationship between Coach Harbaugh and Lamar and Lamar Jackson is something special and something different. And he has been winning nothing but ball games for this man. So I wouldn't be surprised. And we're going to talk about this because we've been talking about this early. If the man gets 45 per year. John Harbaugh, just to correct you, I always get Jim and John. John, I said Jim. Yes, yes. Jim's the Michigan coach. John's the Ravens coach. Just want to clarify that up for any of the listeners and viewers. And uh, I'll say this, though, Ike. They can convert on fourth downs, but not two-point conversions. I'm going to run some salt on the wounds to the division rival, given that this is the Believe in Steelers podcast. Hey, you, 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 you you know, you super petty. You know, and, when it comes yeah. down to putting salt in that wound, you pet his hell with that. You don't mind. You do not mind. 
kicking the situation down when it's already down. I'm just being <laughs> real. I'm just being real. <laughs> Bills and Patriots, <laughs> AFC East. Revenge game for the Bills on the line, mm-hmm. Ike. But just the mm-hmm. style of football that these two teams play, the Patriots coming off a loss, their winning streak snapped. I think the Patriots recoup in Foxborough. And for me, this has everything to do with matchups. It has to do with style of play. It has to do with the fact that we are now in December. The Buffalo Bills with their offense, Josh Allen, that's great. You know, Stefan Diggs, that's great. I don't know that they can run the ball effectively enough. And then can they stop the run with the physical brand of football that the Patriots play when the Patriots went on their winning streak? It's not that they're asking Mac Jones to do all that much as a rookie quarterback, but it's been the stout defensive play. I think they recoup after their week 15 loss. I like the Patriots at home to prove their ascendancy in the AFC East and and the bills. They've kind of been in a little bit of a tailspin. This is just going to be an absolute dogfight between the two team, the two best teams in this division, but who you got between bills and Patriots. Like I'm going to take the Patriots at home. Yeah. I got the pass at home as well. Excuse me. And here's why I got the pass. I got Josh Allen. I think he's the leading rusher for the Buffalo Bills. That's not good because Josh Allen plays quarterback for the Buffalo Bills in the last couple of games. I think the last three games, you can watch the Google that for me if you want to get the stats on that for me, Mark. The last three games, I think he's been uh, leading the team in rushing. That's not good in, in, in that show quarterback. Um, at the same time, you got to establish some kind of run game when it comes down to this December and January of football, and that's exactly what the Buffalo Bills haven't been doing. Now, you want to talk about a run game. You want to talk about somebody who's pissed off. You want to talk about somebody uh, two weeks ago when they played you, they damn near ran the ball 50 times. They're going to try to do the same thing again, against y'all. So that, that's why I like the patch right now. So I think I think a lot of play action pass going to be more in depth when it comes to this game because I don't think the Buffalo Bills going to allow that to happen. They're going to sold out for this run and make Matt – Mac and cheese, Matt Jones. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Matt Jones. Um, passed the ball to him, but yeah, I'm sticking with the pass. Um, Coach Belichick is evolving because he apologized about how short he was in the post game meeting, and we yeah, talked I saw about that. this. Mark, I saw that, Mark. We we talked about this. I said, I think because of his son is on style, he is always in his dad's ear on what the players and what this generation do like and what they don't like. And dad, I think he need to change some things. And I think his dad is listening. <laughs> I, I really do. This is looking like a totally different football team, personality-wise. They look like they're having more fun. They're now looking like they're all suited and booted and coming from a private school, and you got to be in a straight line every time, and you got to dot every eye and cross every T. They look like they're having more fun. And I truly believe, and we will continue to talk about this because eventually it will come out, because his son, because Coach Bill Belichick's son is on staff, he is relaying the message because he's younger and he's saying that it, that his dad needs to evolve, and that's exactly what his dad is doing. He's evolving as a Hall of Fame head coach, which is rare because usually them coaches be stuck in their ways. Who said you couldn't teach a, an old dog new tricks? Because Bill Belichick yes, is at age 69. And I saw that this week. And I'm like, who has inhabited Bill Belichick's body? Because it, we're on to Buffalo. Like, I, I can't do the Bill Belichick impression. Right, right, but he's right, always right, so, right, right. like, I know he, he has a personality. If you watch the NFL Top 100, you know that he does care about his legacy. But in his media availabilities, I know this is part of the Patriots' MO. Okay, we don't want to give an opposing team any bulletin board material. When I saw that he apologized to media members, I couldn't believe it. I, oh, I could man. not believe it. Now, no. uh, our research department, too. We'll, we'll come back to Belichick in just a second. Okay. You're spot on about Josh Allen. He has been the team's leading rusher in two of the team's last three games. Devin Singletary okay. led, the, led the team with 86 yards on the ground in week 15 against the Carolina Panthers. But the two weeks before that, Allen was the team's leading rusher. And Allen is not far behind Singletary for the team lead in rushing yards. And the difference isn't that much, Ike. So Devin Singletary, 633 yards on the ground this season. Josh Allen, 
555. So he's got a big build. He is a young quarterback, but right. the fact that that's even close just further proves your point. One other thing too, wide receiver Cole Beasley is on the team's COVID-19 list. He will miss the game against the Patriots. So that's one less weapon that the Bills will have against New England. Again, a lot of it for me has to do with matchups, but let's go back to Belichick for just a second because it, <laughs> it's fun talking about Bill Belichick again, considering that among media members, like it's, he's always been monotone. You have to right. ask him a smart enough question, but not a question that's so inside baseball where he's just going to be like, yeah. So it's, it's finding that fine line with him. So again, when I saw that this week, I was just like, what the heck is going on right now? Yeah. When I, when I, when I saw him apologize, I just thought about his son. That's the first thing that came to my mind because I have a son, I have nephews, they're all young, and they made me evolve. I have some kids I coach, they are young, and they made me evolve. They made me evolve. So um, I'm stuck in my ways with a lot of things, but when it comes down to these kids and seeing how open-minded they are and seeing um, how fearless they are, how they're not scared to make mistakes and take risks at a young age, at least the ones I'm around, I respect that. I respect that a lot. So um, when I saw Coach Belichick apologize, um, just just looking at just looking at this team the last two years, for I'm thinking it's his son. That's that's exactly what I'm thinking. Like his son is getting to him, and he's getting to him in a good way. <laughs> and that's why they're sitting, you know, number two in the AFC behind the Kansas City Chiefs, pushing for these playoffs. I know the narrative is building to a Super Bowl between the Patriots and Buccaneers, maybe the Patriots and Packers too. We'll see. Still a lot of football left, but I know that that's the storyline. So we're going to go from the mountaintop to the gutter, Ike. Jags at Jets for what might be the toilet bowl. A toilet company should sponsor this game in all seriousness. Be great branding, a great branding opportunity. But on the line in this game, potentially, which team gets the number one overall pick in the 2022 draft? In the tank for Thibodeau's sweepstakes, I'm talking about Oregon edge rusher Kayvon Thibodeau, who's largely considered to be the top overall pick in the draft now. I think it's interesting now that the Detroit Lions have won uh, two games now that maybe that they want to go with one of the Michigan boys, either Aiden Hutchinson or David Ajabo off the edge, keep that Michigan connection with the Lions. But the Jags and Jets... I, I'm going to watch this game and I'm going to love it because considering it's just kind of worse than the worst of the league. Remember the Jags without Urban Meyer now. But again, I think this is lining up for, you know, which team kind of has a brighter future moving forward because there is some young talent here. The Jets with their quarterback, the second overall oh pick, Zach Wilson, and uh, the Jaguars with Trevor Lawrence. Two guys who will be linked throughout the duration of their careers, just considering Hopefully. where each player was drafted. Yeah, so between these two teams, I'm going to go to betonline.ag. And between the Jags and the Jets, I'm going with the Detroit Lions because I think Detroit can beat both yes. of them at the same time. <laughs> I, I, I love it. Jags, Jets, Ike, you're Switzerland. I love it. Yes. That's exactly what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with my dog, Ike. Stay away from this one. It's pretty much a pick em. It's pretty much a pick em. Oh, hang on. It's pretty much a pick em in this game, considering the Jets are favored by one point. I'm going with Ike. Take Detroit in this one. Uh, we'll move on. Our score predictions at Arrowhead. <laughs> Steelers and Chiefs. Kansas City favored by 10 initially. Again, this game off the board right now as we see which teams will play. Ike. My prediction, I've got the Chiefs winning 31 to 27. I think the the Chiefs are among the best in the league right now, considering the winning streak that they're on. I think the best team in the AFC right now. So I'll right, take Kansas right. City at home to win by four. Who you got between Kansas City and Pittsburgh <coughs> on Sunday? <coughs> Since they got a lot of that going on with the Kansas City Chiefs right now, I don't think you know, Cheetah or Travis Kelsey is, is going to play since they've been on that COVID-19 list. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers getting a steal in Arrowhead. <laughs> I, I see what you're doing. They're saying, fade mark, fade mark. 
And do you have a score prediction for Sunday? Yeah, the score is 27-24, Pittsburgh Steelers on their way. I did think that you were crazy to pick the Chiefs to win four games in a row. They've got the first leg that taken care of, considering that the Steelers beat the Titans in week 15. So we'll see if psychic Ike Taylor, clairvoyant Ike Taylor, comes to fruition yet again. And the Steelers getting some help, considering if the Chiefs are without Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, What a Christmas gift and Christmas miracle that that is. And as we wrap up today's show, speaking of Christmas, Ike, I'm going to wrap up with your best Christmas gift ever. So I want to start with you. It can be giving and receiving, whichever you want to start with. Which is the best gift you've you've given or received? The floor is yours, Ike Taylor. Oh, what I just did today. What I I just went to the jewelry store. I just went to the jewelry store. And the cousins on my jewelry store is lightboxjewelry.com. And I just, I just, I just spent some, I just put a dent. I put it, I put it, I put a dent in the pocket. So I took care of every lady in my household, my moms, my sister, um, my stepmom, Lex. I just, I just bought them. I just, my cleaning lady, Miss Claudia, I just, I just bought them. I just, it, just, it just hit my pocket. It hit my pocket something decent. It hit my pocket something decent. So I'm, that's why I said, if you or Miss Courtney need y'all grass cut, car wash, house clean, <laughs> holla at your boy. <laughs> Ike, I love that. I love that. Um, I've got two. So giving, I'm in Kansas City now. My family's lived mm-hmm. here for about a year now, relocating out of Chicago. Uh, around this time last year, the Naperville Sun wrote a story about my brother and his friends. They play each Thanksgiving what they call the Pradle mm-hmm. Bowl, named after the late mayor of Naperville, Illinois, George Pradle. I gave him a framed copy of the Naperville Sun story. And my brother and his friends, uh, a lot of the members of the 2007 8A state champions at Naperville North High School, they all play in this game on Thanksgiving morning. So that was probably the favorite gift that I've given with the football connection and then receiving Ike, I would probably say my PlayStation two in the two games I can remember playing and no Madden no four with Michael Vick was like the quintessential, the creme de la creme of football games, but Madden no five with Ray Lewis on the cover. It was the first year of the hit stick. That's really one of my favorite Christmas memories. And part of this, why this comes full circle, like is when I was initially getting pitched to do this show, they say, oh, we have a former Steelers player. And I go, who's the player? And they say, Ike Taylor. I'm like, the defensive back. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I remember playing with Ike on Madden and the Steelers defense and Troy Polamalu. So those two things, giving and receiving, both football related. Some of my beloved Christmas memories with my family. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Um, I mean, your family just became my family. We've been doing this for damn near two and a half years. So, you know, mom, dad, brother, we all talk. So it's just always good to build relationships. Uh, even though Brink TV and, and Miss Court and her crew came on board, that's always family. Uh, still got to give a big shout out to the Believe in Podcast. Still this man they, for us, for giving us an opportunity, especially me. That's family. Um, BetOnline.ag since day one. You know, they, they've been they've been betting on us since day one. And the more they bet on us, the more we're going to fill their pockets up. Just give us a couple of years. And lightboxjury.com, man, welcome to the family. That's how we look at it. So <clears throat> for Mark and I, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Please rate and review us. Give us a five piece. That's five stars. I want to thank uh, everybody I just named who we're under. Believe it still is podcast, Brings TV, betonline.ag, lightbox.com. Got to thank my, got to thank my dog, Mark Bergen and his family just for being part of my family. So I got to look at it like, Ike Taylor, Bergen slash hyphenated slash Taylor. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate all that, man. Just want to thank everybody. And make sure everybody have a holly- happy holidays and a Merry Christmas, man. It's always good to see and be around your family. Uh, this one of my favorite times between Thanksgiving and Christmas because I get to see my family. But it brings joy to me and my mom and my sisters, especially my son. So want to thank everybody for tuning in, man. I don't want to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to let Miss Courtney, even though we end with this, I'm going to let Miss Courtney hug crew me. It's cute music. 
it's time to start a show. That's like one of my favorite things that Mark says. Well, Mark, man, take this thing home, bro. Take this thing home, Mark. I, I couldn't have put it, put, it, put it better myself. I want to wish all the listeners and the viewers of the Believe in Steelers podcast a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. For Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for listening to the Believe in Steelers podcast. We will see you next week on Monday following Chiefs and Steelers. But until then, take care. So long, everybody. Peace.